Hello guys and welcome to my tier list of all the Fallout 4 DLCs. If you don't know what Fallout 4 is, it is a video game taking place in a post-apocalyptic wasteland after nukes hit the world. Um, and I have done another tier list about this before. It was called uh, Fallout 4 um, Guns tier list or something like that. Or ranking all of Fallout 4 guns. Um, but this time we're gonna rank all of the DLCs. And uh, get ready for some controversial stuff right here, because um, you, you guys probably won't agree with me some of this stuff, so <laughs> I guess I guess we'll go ahead and see. Alright, so let's start from going to how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So how many of these? Okay, so I'll have to put 2 in D. So I'll actually just rank them from 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6, and so on. So uh, let's start from the bottom. The worst DLC for Fallout 4 is the Wasteland DLC. It barely really added anything to the game. I remember when this DLC came out and I was like, wow, a DLC already for the game. And, uh, <laughs> and it, it was pretty much just uh, them adding the ability to get a few more items and build a little bit more on your settlement, uh, have cage fights. Uh, it, I, I was so disappointed when I actually saw what's in the package, but I was hoping for the big DLCs. Um, but ultimately, it was a bit disappointing, and it was certainly not worth the money at the time. Um, the next DLC would be... Do, 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 which one, which one? Oh, but oh, Contraptions! Let's, let's go down here, by the way. Whoops. Actually, this one is better than Contraptions, so... So, Contraptions adds the ability to build... Um, I mean, what else? Contraptions. Conveyor builds. Uh, extra technological stuff in your settlement. It, it was kind of revolutionary when it came out because you could automate a lot of stuff. But ultimately, it was a bit disappointing still because it didn't have anything major with it. It was just more items. You know, it might as well be a live service game at that point because they're just adding like things onto a game that aren't like major DLCs or anything, just extra content. And um, I was starting to lose hope for other DLCs. Um, uh, but later on, more DLCs came out that actually were good. Uh, I don't remember when exactly these came out, um, but uh, I remember when the Vault Tech DLC came out, I missed it. <laughs> so I don't know when it actually came out, but I completely missed the Vault Tech DLC. I have no idea when it came out. I didn't even realize it was a DLC when I played the game, and I automatically, because I had the season pass. Um, so I, I didn't even realize that I had gotten the Vault DLC. So all of a sudden there was this, this vault called Vault 88. And I was like, I've never seen that before when I played the game. What? And uh, and it seems like it added some quests. It, it adds some uh, new characters. Uh, it adds some cool Vault Tech experiments. Um, a new place to build. And a huge place to build, really. And, and the thing is, the last two DLCs only added a couple items. Um, this one added a whole new area, it added uh, new quests, it added to the world instead of like just, just adding items, you know? So I, I think like th this DLC really, it, it was really fun, like I really enjoyed it for the most part. Um, but it, it actually, I, I, I'll have to put this at BT, I'll tell you why in a bit. Um, but this DLC is really enjoyable because every single Fallout fan stream is, you know, creating their own vault and managing their own vault. So having the ability to recruit vault dwellers and um, just kind of have your own vault was really cool. I'm just a bit saddened that it didn't expand on it more because it could have done so much more in the vault. That, that you could have actually had a proper vault with uh, automated systems and everything. But but you, you can technically do that, but it wasn't a requirement in the DLC itself. And it's a bit underwhelming for being like about vault tech. It's not exclusively like vault tech stuff. It's just building a vault when the uh, wasteland has already been affected by the nukes. And and it it, it has it had promise. It still has promise. They just didn't expand on it. Like they could have done so much with it. Instead of having your own vault, you could you could have had multiple vault systems. You could have had a another vault somewhere. You could have like a specific network of vaults. Or even better, uh, you could have a, a vault where you can make up your own experiments with items from the game, like the uh, the freezing people or the um, or putting or making synths or something like that. They could have had uh, different things like that. They could have added to it, but they just didn't. 
uh, all needs to be said. I'm not planning on this video being super long because I have a lot of things to talk about. But uh, knowing me, I might make it 20 to 30 minutes long just because I talk too much. So, um, <laughs> anyway. Um, I, I really did enjoy that DLC. Uh, the one that's below that is the Automatron. Now, the Automatron DLC kind of went a bit above and beyond. Because... It, it expanded on what vault Tech did, just with a less interesting system. Because all this did was add another companion. Um, I mean, I say that as if it's like normal, but like, you, you can build robots and stuff. Now, I'm not that interested in the robot aspect and building robots. And the different areas this added was more than vault Tech. But but I was more in sync with the whole Vault Tech thing. Like it had so much promise, so much potential. The actual DLC itself did not exactly live up to the expectations. But it was enjoyable and I had a lot of fun. So I I, I will say that the Vault Tech one just had more of an effect on me personally. I mean, if if you look at the content itself, you could probably swap them around. I just choose that Vault Tech is a bit more interesting to me because it's it's more interesting to me than the mechanist and robots traveling around uh, but anyway it added new quests uh, new robots new characters two new companions technically and then you can have any robot companion you want and you can modify robots as cool as it is in practice it never really like the same thing with the vault tech dlc it never really was expanded upon more than what was necessary like you couldn't straight up build a killer robot you couldn't do, do anything crazy like that it was just, here's a couple parts, here's something. It took modders to kind of make the system better. Uh, but even modders can only do it so much, you know, take it so far. Uh, so again, Bethesda kind of didn't go above and beyond. They kind of just did ne necessary stuff to make the DLC go out the door. And, and it shows in both of those DLCs. Uh, so so it, it saddens me when I see all the potential in these two and they just didn't live up to it. The Automatron one especially had so much potential. But all you really did in the quest was go to this location and kill these things, go to the next location and kill these things. You pretty much just did that over and over and over again. And while that adds new locations and new cool storylines to the actual world, it just didn't really feel as interesting as the Vault Tech add-on. Because the mechanist we've seen in Fallout 3, right? We've heard about the mechanist and the ant thing. And I think there's even an event in the, that game where you can see the mechanist fighting the um, ant person or whatever it was. So ultimately, it was okay, but it wasn't more than okay. Uh, same thing with the vault Tech one. It has so much potential, but it was just okay because it didn't even try to reach the potential of what, what it could do. Probably because they were spending all their resources on uh, things like Nuka World. Now, a Nuka World, I think, is the last one that came out, but it's still, I still don't think it's as good as Far Harbor. Um, now, nu Nuka World uh, takes you to a theme park about Nuka Cola and stuff, where you can find the. Um... Oh, I need to be careful about spoilers if you haven't played the game. Um, it takes you to a theme park centered around Nuka Cola, uh, where they are using. I, I guess Nuka Cola, which is just pretty much Coca Cola, like it's a take on Coca Cola, um, where, where they have theme parks made around it. They have different areas made around it, like Cowboy, Space. Um, like I said, it's a theme park, so there's different themes associated with Cola. Just take some random themes, like, um, I don't know, um, Aliens, and then say Aliens Nuka Cola, and then mix those two things together, and then they had like a theme in that park. So there are different themes. Um, <clears throat> it essentially gave you a whole new map to explore. Um, you had a certain amount of role playing that one. Uh, it centered around raiders and you dealing with raiders. So it, it kind of had a lot of stuff it could do. And this time they actually tried to reach for the potential. You could help the raiders take over the park. You could get rid of the raiders if you wanted to. Like, you could do whatever you wanted in this DLC. It also added a new companion. It also lets you go to the Commonwealth and be a raider there if you really want to. It, it just added a whole new aspect to Fallout 4. And uh, it, it did that so well. Like, all the new mechanics, everything. The overall story itself with the raiders, eh, it, it didn't really hit with me. It was a bit boring. Um, it was just... 
Personally, I had the most fun just exploring the theme park. The story itself about why you're doing what you're doing and what the raiders are doing there and what the point is. Like it, it just it just kind of didn't hit with me very well. Uh, so th this this DLC just as cool as the world was, the actual story really really either wasn't there or it wasn't interesting enough to me. Uh, and that's why it's number two slash number uh, or slash A instead of being S. Which brings me to S tier, which is Far Harbor. So Far Harbor um, was an experience, I'll tell you that much. Now, the best thing about Far Harbor, I have to say, is the story. Uh, the story in Far Harbor is a bit more linear than a typical Fallout story. But it still gives you options that you can pick between. Um, it doesn't say, oh, here, go wild in this open world. It says, I will guide you to what you're supposed to do. But if you want to explore, you can explore. Just know that this place is not really made for exploring, per se. It's made to follow the story and then explore along the way. And uh, you can kind of tell that Far Harbor is like a mini Fallout 4, but better. <laughs> it's, it's weird to say. Because it has a lot of background story, it has a lot of locations that make sense, that uh, has stories behind them. It was... Uh, how do you say? It, it was different, it was a fresh take. It felt more polished than the actual Fallout 4's main story, which is go find this thing, which is typically what they, they do. Uh, but in Far Harbor, it's more about dealing with the fact that Again, I'm going to try to avoid spoilers, but there are synths on the island. And uh, and people have to survive a deadly fog, and you have to help them survive the deadly fog. And it's kind of... It, it, it's crazy how they kind of orchestrated that. And it's all because you're just investigating something. A missing person's case, really. It, it just goes from being a typical case to going further and further up to being... Oh my goodness, I didn't even realize this was possible, like, scenario. And it just keeps growing, growing, growing. And that's why I kind of like it, because it just kind of goes from 0 to 10 really fast when you're there. And, and, and you feel the brutality of Far Harbor more than you feel the brutality in Fallout 4. Because in Far Harbor, it is pretty much... You see people eating people, you uh, see trappers, which is just people who's gone crazy because of the fog. Who, who have pretty much turned raiders, but they don't really raid because they can't, they want to. They just raid because they have gone crazy. And, and I just felt like Fallout 4 lacked that aspect of like, this is a wasteland. People die here. This is a bad place to be. In Fallout 4, it felt more like, oh, this place, oh, we, we, we're fine. There's not really much going on here besides the Cloning Sea. But no one goes near the Cloning Sea, so most people are fine. And uh, we have this whole Diamond City thing going on, and no, not a lot of people have problems there. But then you actually travel around the world, and, and, and you get attacked all the time. And it's just weird to think that everyone in the Commonwealth are a bit better off than I've ever seen in any other Fallout game. Uh, and, and that's without counting the NCR, because the NCR is a huge faction. This is just individuals that are better off. Uh, there is no big faction, it's just Diamond City. Um, and then Brotherhood of Steel. But even Brotherhood of Steel is just kind of chilling in an airport after taking it over. You didn't even help them take it over. You just kind of, they took it over. Uh, I don't know if you can help them. Maybe if you travel there really fast and before they, they get there. But Far Harbor just kind of lures me in. It gets me interested in the story and the side stories and the characters too. There are a lot of different characters that are interesting to learn about. And then your actions actually change the world somewhat. Same thing with Nuka Cola or Nuka, Nuka World, I mean. Things also change the world in that one. But in this one, it was more personal. Um, it, it, it was more like you helped the person out, you saw a thing change on the map. Uh, now, there is only one quest that really does that. Or one person that you can do quests for that really does that. And it's kind of cool when you see the change take effect. Uh, same thing with when you do certain things there, you get new dialogue opening, uh, or you open up new dialogue, and then you gain the trust of the of Far Harbor, and then you have three different factions there, the Children of Adam, the Synths, I'm just gonna say, and then the, the people living there. 
And you kind of just have to try to deal with the fog too. Like there is this fog and the fog is your enemy. But you also have the creatures in the fog. Like it has this spooky atmosphere. But at the same time, it, it's, it's the same as Fallout 4. It's just now you have fog. Um, but humans and people cannot really live in the fog. I, I like the twist. I like the danger. I like the feeling of helplessness in that one. It feels like a wasteland, even though it's just an island pretty much. Where does the fog come from? I don't think that was ever really established. I think it was produced by a creature called Fog Crawler or something. I'm, I'm not sure if that was what it was or if it's just because they live in the fog. Um, or was it a machine that produced the fog? I don't remember how the fog came there and I probably shouldn't spoil it anyway. Um, but the fog is, is something you should avoid in that game. But but technically it's not that dangerous, it's just more radiation the more you walk in it. So technically the crazy people just irradiate the people. But they really had the whole feel down. They just didn't have the gameplay feel down. Like when you actually traversed the island, it was fairly easy. Not too much, but there was a lot of world building and storytelling in each location you went to. Fallout 4 had the same, but it didn't have the same... It didn't have it to the same extent as, as Fallout New Vegas and some of Fallout 3's locations. Fallout 4's locations don't serve much of a purpose, they're just places you go. Where New Vegas and Fallout 3, they kind of serve the purpose most of the time. Otherwise, they were just areas you could go into if you really felt like getting loot and stuff. Um, But ultimately, Far Harbor is my favorite DLC that they've made thus far in Fallout 4. If we're going to talk about the other video games, New Vegas and Fallout 3, I don't think these DLCs kind of reach the same level of immersiveness and effort. But that's besides the point. Far Harbor to me is a great story. Uh, the story in that one is way better than any of the other Fallout stuff. Nuka World has the best world. Uh, new, new world they've created, in my opinion. And, and those two things are kind of what differentizes them. What do I value more of those two things? You can clearly see that I value the story a little bit more in Fallout specifically. Now, if it was any other game, I think I would value the actual world a bit more. But because it's an RPG, I need to feel like I'm part of the story or that the story takes place without me there and stuff like that. Sadly, it never really gets to that point. But I can feel like in Far Harbor, the story has already developed a lot without me being there. Like, it doesn't actually develop, but it feels like it does. Nuka World, you're center of the you're, like, you're, you're the center of attention in that one. And um, I don't like being the center of attention. I just like being a person in the world, not the world being me. So, um, yeah. Th those are my, I, I guess, this is my tier DLC thing. Uh, my tier list of all the DLCs for Fallout 4. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Um, what, which DLC do you prefer? Uh, do you like Far Harbor, Nuka World? Maybe you like vault or even Ultimatron more for some reason. Uh, I don't dislike it, if you do. It would just be interesting to hear why, so you can leave it in the comment section. Maybe Ultimatron, because it changes the normal Commonwealth to be a bit more dangerous. Also a little bit annoying. Um, and perhaps, maybe you just love the new items they added and you felt like that was good enough. You know, um, I won't blame you for that either. One thing's for sure though, they should have added more content to the game, or at least I feel like they should have, and I feel like they should have been cheaper for what we got. Because uh, Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, just their DLCs really expanded the world. It just, just felt like separate entities from the world for the most part. But uh, yeah, um, hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you in another one of my Let's Plays. Consider liking, subscribing and sharing. And as always, stay awesome.